We are going to say a few things about Grapeville, Pennsylvania. And number one, the first thing I want to say about it is, surprisingly, Grapeville was not always where it is now. It was somewhere else. <laughs> there are two events in the past of Grapeville that came together to make it what it is. The first of those was the coming of the Pennsylvania Railroad. The main line of the Pennsylvania Railroad was put through there uh, and up and running in 1852. The second event was the coming of the company that became known as Westmoreland Glass. <clears throat> that was really the big event that uh, established it as a invisible entity, you might say. After the railroad came through, the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad established a railroad station there. Uh, it was called Grapeville Station, where Grapeville is now. However, Grapeville then was up on the turnpike, what we think of as uh, up on Route 30. And the area down where we think of Grapeville was kind of like farmland and a stop on the railroad. The other big event happened in 1889. That was when a company from East Liverpool, Ohio established a glass plant there and they brought some of their uh, workers with them and laid out a town where they offered their uh, workers housing at a good rate. That became known as Grapeville. And shortly after that, <clears throat> the factory was uh, purchased by a couple of fellows from Pittsburgh, the West Brothers who uh, ran it for a good many years into the 1930s, actually, when the Brainerds got hold of it. Uh, the company ran until the 1980s. It shut down about 1982. And the owner then, later in the 80s, <clears throat> asked me to move in and carry out a project that I had been interested in for a long time. That's converting an old factory into living, working, exhibiting space for artists. And I did that. I moved in in, uh, it was 88 that I moved in and ran a very interesting project there until probably about 92. And that, we're going to talk about these things and I'll have some mapping and pictures to uh, describe the things that happened. Hold on. And now for some pictures. We are looking at mapping from 1857, quite a while ago. That was about five years after the railroad was put through here. That's the railroad, the main line of the old Pennsylvania Railroad. Now this <clears throat> is where Grapeville was then. Grapeville was up on the turnpike, which we now think of as Route 30. It's been realigned a bit. And here, down here, is where Grapeville will become, although there's not, not much down there now at this point in 1857. I'm not sure if the railroad station was even down there yet. Now we go fast forward 19 years. We're in 1876. One of the things you notice is how much the population has increased population density is getting heavier. Now here is Grapeville up on the uh, up on the turnpike where it started out and down here you have Grapeville Station indicated. Next we'll see this area right here blown up a bit This is the railroad going through. In this area up in here that is thought of now as Grapeville, there's hardly anything there. This little blob right here is called Grapeville Station. Down here, right across the road, that was Crosshorse House 
and George Crossor was running a tannery beside his house. We will get a look at that. And we shouldn't forget John Brown's store, which we will eventually look at, but probably not this time. This is Crossor's tannery down here. Uh, the tannery that George Crossor was running. And of course the factory is here, but that wasn't there until about 1890. This gives a photographic indication of that area. This is the uh, tannery down here. And now you see Grapeville is built up up here. This shows the situation in 1921. Now we're going backwards in time just a bit, looking at mapping. This is the 1890s. This is the factory. This is the house that Crossshores own. The West brothers, who are the people who own this factory, have a vinegar company down here. They have a factory that's making vinegar big time. Notice up here in their factory, the glass factory, there's also a place where they're making mustard. That may seem, sound a bit strange. Here is some of the labeling from that mustard. That mustard was composed in the ingredients. It was composed of 75% vinegar. You see at the glass plant, they were making glass containers, putting mustard in the containers and selling it. They were making a lot of other things out of glass too, but this was just one of their products. This was the West Brothers vinegar factory down beside the tracks where the Crossroads had a tannery previously. Now this is one of my attempts to try to make sense of some of these things. Uh, this is the town of Grapeville we know today, the railroad. That's the site of the railroad station, Grapeville station. This is the site where the tannery and vinegar factory used to sit. And it, it's just rubble now. There's nothing there. This is the ruins of the glass factory. The Crossroar House is still there. That is the Crossroar House as it looked in the 1990s. I did that shot. That is Google Earth's version of the Crossroar House, which I think looks very good. I'm glad to see an old house like that that still looks okay. Looking down the tracks, shot I did around 1990, the old factory before it burned down, and the Crossroar House. This is our final shot, looking from the roof of the old factory about 1990. This shows the Crossroar House down there. And it's a nice shot in fall, good fall colors. We will see more of the Grapeville area in other, uh, other little videos on this. But that'll be enough for this.